Hare Krishna, this is the audio narration of the Nectar of Instructions by His Divine Grace, Desi Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Prabhupada. Text 1. Vacho Vegam Mansa Krodh Vegam Jiha Vegam Udrupast Vegam Etan Vegam Yo Vishet Dhiraha Sarvam Pimam Prithvim Sasishyat Translation a sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger and the urge of the tongue, belly and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world. Purport in Srimad Bhagavatam 6.1.9 and 10, Parikshit Maharaj placed a number of intelligent questions before Shukadeva Goswami. One of these questions was, why do people undergo atonement if they cannot control their senses? For instance, a thief who may know perfectly well that he may be arrested for his stealing and he may actually even see a thief arrested by the police, yet he continues to steal. Experience is gathered by hearing and seeing. One who is less intelligent uh, gathers experience by seeing and one who is more intelligent gathers experiences by hearing. When an intelligent person hears from the law books uh, and shastras or the scriptures that stealing is not good and he hears that a thief is punished when arrested, he refrains from theft. A less intelligent person may first have to be arrested and punished for stealing to learn to stop stealing. However, a rascal, a foolish man may have the experience of both hearing and seeing and uh, may even be punished, uh, but still he continues to steal. Uh, even if such a person atones and is punished by the government, he will again commit theft as soon as he comes out of jail. If punishment in jail is considered atonement, what is the benefit of such atonement? Thus Parikshit Maharaj inquired. Drishti Shrutabhyam Yat Papam Jananya Pyat Manu Ahitam Karoti Bhuo Vivashaha Prayash Chit Matam Matho Katham Kwachin Vartate Abhradat Kwachit Chatrati Tat Punaha Prayaschitam Atho Apartham Manye Kunj Rashochvataha compared atonement to an elephant's bath bathing. The elephant may take a very nice bath in the river, but as soon as it comes onto the bank, it throws dirt all over its body. What then is the value of its bathing? Similarly, many spiritual practitioners chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and at the same time commit many forbidden things, thinking that their chanting will counteract their offenses. Of the ten type of offenses one can commit while chanting the holy name of the Lord, this offense is called Namo Balad Yasya hi papa buddhi, committing sinful activities on the strength of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Similarly, certain Christians go to church to confess their sins, thinking that confessing their sins before a priest and performing some penance will re relieve them from the results of their weekly sins. As soon as Saturday is over and Sunday comes, they again begin their sinful activities expecting to be forgiven the next Saturday. This kind of uh, prayaschita or atonement is condemned by the Parikshit Maharaj, the most intelligent king of his time, Shukadeva Goswami, equally intelligent as befitting the spiritual master of the Maharaja, Parikshit answered the king and confirmed that his statement concerning atonement was correct. A sinful activity cannot be counteracted by a pious activity. Thus, real prashita atonement is the awakening of our dormant Krishna consciousness. Real atonement involves coming to real knowledge and for this there is a standard process. When one follows a regulated hygiene process, he does, does not fall sick. 
a human being is meant to be trained according to certain principles to revive his original knowledge such a methodical life is described as tapasya one can be gradually elevated to the standard of real knowledge or krishna consciousness by practicing austerity and celibacy brahmacharya by controlling the mind by controlling the senses by giving up one's possession in charity by being avowedly truthful by keeping clean and by practicing yoga asanas however if one is fortunate enough to get the association of a pure devotee he can easily surpass all the practices for controlling the mind by the mystic yoga process simply by following the regulative principles of the krishna consciousness refraining from illicit sex meat eating intoxication and gambling and by engaging in the service of the supreme lord under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master this easy process is being recommended by shrila rupa goswami first one must control his speaking power every one of us has the power of speech as soon as we get the opportunity we begin to speak if we do not speak from krishna consciousness we speak about all sort of nonsense a toad in a field speaks by croaking and similarly everyone who has a tongue wants to speak even if all he has to say is nonsense the croaking of the toad however simply invites the snake please come here and eat me nevertheless although it is inviting that the toad goes on croaking the talking of materialistic men and impersonalist mayavadi philosophers may be compared to the croaking of frogs they are always speaking nonsense and thus inviting that to catch them controlling speech however does not mean self imposed silence the external process of mauna as mayavadi philosophers think silence may appear helpful for some time but ult- ultimately it proves a failure the meaning of controlled speech conveyed by shrila rupa goswami advocates the positive process of krishna katha engaging the speaking process in glorifying the supreme lord shri krishna the tongue can thus glorify the name form qualities and past times of the lord the preacher of krishna katha is always beyond the clutches of death this is the significance of controlling the urge to speak the restlessness or fickleness of the mind mano vega is controlled when one can fix his mind on the lotus feet of krishna the chaitanya charitra amrit madhya 22.31 says krishna surya sama maya hai andhkar jahan krishna tahan nahi mayar adhikar krishna is just like the sun and maya is just like darkness if the sun is present there is no question of darkness similarly if krishna is present in the mind there is no possibility of the minds being agitated by the maya's influence the yogic process of neglecting all material thoughts will not help to try to create a vacuum in the mind is artificial the vacuum will not remain however if one always thinks of krishna and uh, how to serve krishna best one's mind will naturally be controlled similarly anger can be con- controlled we, we cannot stop anger altogether but we simply become angry with those who blaspheme the lord or the devotees of the lord we control our anger in krishna consciousness lord chaitanya mahaprabhu became angry with the miscreant brothers jagai and madhai who blasphemed and struck nityananda prabhu in his sikshashtakama lord chaitanya wrote rana tapi suni chena taror api sahishnuna one should be humbler than the grass and more tolerant than the tree one may then ask why the lord exhibits his anger 
The point is that one should be ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self. But when Krishna or his pure devotee is blasphemed, a genuine devotee becomes angry and acts like the fire against the offender. Krodha, anger, cannot be stopped, but it can be applied rightly. It was in anger that Hanumana set fire to Lanka, but he is worshipped as the greatest devotee of the Lord Ramachandra. This means that he utilized his anger in the right way. Arjuna serves as another example. He was not willing to fight, but Krishna incited his anger. You must fight. To fight without anger is not possible. Anger is controlled, however, when utilized in the service of the Lord. As for the urges of the tongue, we are we all experience that the tongue wants to eat palatable dishes. Generally, we should not allow the tongue to eat according to its choices, but should not uh, should control the tongue by supplying prashada. The devotee's attitude is that he will eat only when Krishna gives him prasada. Uh, that is the way to control the urge of the tongue. One should take prasada in, at scheduled times and should not eat in restaurants and sweet meat shops uh, simply to satisfy the whims of the tongue or belly. If we stick to the principles of taking only prashada, the urge of the belly and the tongue can be controlled. In a similar manner, the urges of the genitals, the sex impulse, can be controlled when not used unnecessarily. The genitals should be used to beget a Krishna conscious child. Otherwise, they should not be used. The Krishna consciousness movement encourages marriage not for the satisfaction of the genitals, but for begetting of Krishna conscious children. As soon as the children are a little grown up, they are sent to our Gurukula schools in Dallas, Texas, where they are trained to become fully Krishna conscious devotees. Many such Krishna conscious children are required and one who is capable of bringing forth Krishna conscious offspring is allowed to utilize his genitals. When one is fully practiced in the methods of Krishna conscious control, he can become qualified to be a bona fide spiritual master. In his Anuvriti explanation of uh, Upanishad, Amrit, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes that our material identifications creates uh, three kinds of urges. The urge to speak, the urge or demands of the mind and the demands of the body. When a living entity falls victim of these three types of urges, his life becomes inauspicious. One who practices resisting these demands or urges is called a tapasvi or one who practices austerities. By such tapasya, one can overcome victimization by the material energy, the external potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When we refer to the urge to speak, we refer to useless talking such as that of impersonal mayavadi philosophers or of person engaged in fruitive activities technically called karma kanda or of materialistic people who simply want to enjoy life without restriction all such talks all literatures are practical exhibitions of the urge to speak Many people are talking nonsensically or writing volumes of useless books and all this is the result of urge to speak. To counteract this tendency, we have to divert our talking to the subject of Krishna. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.10 and 11. Nayad vachaha chitrapadam harer yasho jagat pavitram pragar nita those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a place of pilgrimage for crows. Since all the perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode. They do not 
drive our pleasures there. Tad vag visargo jantad vitplavo yasmin prati shlokam bad vyat api naam anye anantasya yashok anketani yat shran vanti gayanti grananti sadhvaha. On the other hand, though, that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, pastimes, etc., of the unlimited Supreme Lord is a different creation, full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of the world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental literatures, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. The conclusion is that only when we talk about devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead can we refrain from useless, nonsensical talks. Uh, we should always endeavor to use our speaking power solely for the purpose of realizing Krishna consciousness. As for the agitations of the flickering mind, they are divided into two divisions. The first is called Avirodha Priti or unrestricted attachment and the other is called Virodha Yukta Rodha, anger arising from frustration. Adherence to the philosophy of the Mayavadis, belief in the fruitive results of the Karmavadis and beliefs in plants based on materialistic desires are called Avirodha Priti, Gyanis, Karmis and the materialistic plan makers generally attract the attention of conditioned souls but when the materialistic cannot fulfill their plans and when their devices are frustrated, they become angry. Frustration of material desires produces anger. Similarly, the demand of the body can be divided into three categories, the demand of the tongue, the belly and the genitals. We may observe that these three senses are physically situated in a straight line as far as the body is concerned and that the bodily demands begin with the tongue. If one can restrain the demands of the tongue by limiting its activities to eating of prashada, the urges of the belly and the genitals can automatically be controlled. In this connection, Sri Bhakti Vinoda Thakur says, Sharir avidya jal jadendriye tahe kal jive pele vishay sagare tar madhye jiva ati lobhmaye suhurmati Take jeta katina samsare, Krishna bada dayamai, karibare jiva jai, swa prasad an dil bhai. Nam lit khao, Radha Krishna gun gao, prem dak chaitanya vitai. O Lord, this material body is a lump of ignorance, and the senses are a network of paths leading to death. Somehow or the other, we have fallen into the ocean of material sense, enjoyment, and of all the senses, the tongue is most voracious and uncontrollable. It is very difficult to conquer the tongue in this world. But you, dear Krishna, are very kind to us. You have sent this nice prasada to help us conquer the tongue. Therefore, let us take this prasada to our full satisfaction and glorify your Lordship Shri Shri Radha and Krishna and in love call for the help of Lord Chaitanya and Prabhu Nityananda. There are six kinds of rasas, the tastes, and if one is agitated by any one of them, he becomes controlled by the urges of the tongue. Some persons are attracted to eating of the meat, fish, crabs, eggs, and other things produced by semina and blood and eaten in the form of dead bodies. Others are attracted by eating vegetables, creepers, spinach, and milk products. But all for the satisfaction of the tongue's demands. Such eating for sense gratification, including the use of extra quantity, 
it is of spices like chilies and tamarinds is to be given up by krishna conscious person the use of pan haritaki betel nuts various spices used in pan making tobacco lsd marijuana opium liquor coffee and tea is indulged in to fulfill fulfill illicit demands if we practice accepting only remnants of food offering to krishna it is possible to get free from maya's victimization vegetables grains fruits milk products and water are proper foods to offer to the lord as lord krishna himself prescribes however if one accepts prasada only because of its palatable taste and thus eats too much he falls prey to trying to satisfy the demands of the tongue shri chaitanya mahaprabhu taught us to avoid very palatable dishes even while eating prasada if we offer palatable dishes to the deity with the intention of eating such nice food we are involved in trying to satisfy the demands of the tongue if we accept the invitation of a rich man with the idea of receiving palatable food we are also trying to satisfy the demands of the tongue in chaitanya charit amrit ante leela 6.2 to 7 it is stated जिहि वार लाल से ए इति उति धाय शीश नो देर पारायण कृष्ण नाही पाय पर्सन हु रन्स हेयर एंड देयर सीकिंग टू ग्रेटिफाई हिज पैलेट एंड हु इज ऑलवेज अटैच्ड टू द डिजायर्स ऑफ हिज स्टमक एंड जेनिटल्स इज अनेबल टू अटेन कृष्ण एज स्टेटेड बिफोर द टंग बेली एंड जेनिटल्स आर ऑल सिचुएटेड इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन एंड दे फॉल इन द सेम कैटेगरी लॉर्ड चैतन्या हैज सेड भालो न खाइबो और भालो न परिबो डू नॉट ड्रेस लग्जूरियसली एंड डू नॉट ईट डेलिशियस फूड स्टफ चैतन्य चरित्र अमृत अंत लीला सिक्स पॉइंट टू थ्री सिक्स डोज हु सफर फ्रॉम डिजीजेज ऑफ स्टोमक मस्ट बी अनेबल टू कंट्रोल द अर्जेस ऑफ द वैली at least according to this analysis when we desire to eat more than unnecess than necessary we automatically create many inconveniences in life however if we observe fasting days like ekadashi and janmashtami we can restrain the demands of the belly as far as the urges of genitals are concerned there are two proper and improper or illegal and illicit sex when a man is properly mature he can marry according to the rules and regulations of the shastras and use his genitals for begetting nice children that is legal and religious otherwise he may adopt many artificial means to satisfy the demands of the genitals and he may not use any restraints so uh when one indulges in illicit sex life uh, uh, as defined by the shastras either by thinking planning or talking about or actually having sexual uh, intercourse or by satisfying the genitals by artificial means he is caught in the clutches of maya these instructions apply not only to house holders but also to tyagis or those who are in renounced order of life in his book prema vivarta shri jagat ananda pandita says vairagi bhai gramme katha na shunibe kane gramme varta na kahibe yave milibe ane swapne ona kar bhai istri sambhashan grahe istri chhadiya bhai asi yach van यदि चाहा प्रणय राखिते गौरंगेर सन छोट हर हरिदासेर कथा था कि ये न मने भाल न खाओ खाइबो और भाल न पोरिबो हृदय ते राधा कृष्ण सर्वदा सेविबे my dear brother you are in the renounced order of life and should not listen 
to talk about ordinary worldly things nor should you talk about worldly things when you meet with others do not think of women even in dreams you have accepted the renounced order of life with a vow that forbids you to associate with women if you wish to associate with chaitanya mahaprabhu you must always remember the incident of chota haridasa and how he was rejected by the lord do not eat luxurious dishes or dress in fine garments but always remain humble and serve their lordship shri shri radha krishna in your heart of hearts the conclusion is that one who can control these six items speech mind anger tongue belly and genitals is to be called a swami or goswami swami means master and goswami means master of the go or senses when one accepts the renounced order of life he automatically assumes the title of swami this does not mean that he is the master of his family community or society he must be master of his senses unless one is master of his senses he should not be called goswami but go dasa servant of the senses following in the footsteps of the six goswamis of vrindavan all swamis and goswamis should fully engage in the transcendental loving service of the lord as opposed to this the godasa engages in the service of the senses or in the service of the material world uh, they have no other engagement pralada maharaj has further described the godasa as adanta go which refers to one whose senses are not controlled as adanta go cannot become a servant of krishna in shrimad bhagavatam uh, 7.5.30 pralada maharaj has said, materna कृष्णे परतः स्वतो वा मिथो अभिपद्येत ग्रह व्रता नाम अदांत गोभीर विषताम तमिस्त्रम पुनः पुनः चर वितम चर वित चर्व ना नाम for those who have decided to continue their existence in this material world for the gratification of their senses there is no chance of becoming krishna conscious not by personal and devotion by instruction from others or by joint conferences they are dragged into the unbridled uh, senses into the darkest region of ignorance and thus they madly engage in what is called chewing the chewed text 2 अत्यहार प्रयास चजल्पो निग्रह जन संग्रह चोल्यह चीर्भक्तिरनश्य वन वंस डिवोशनल सर्विस इज स्पॉइल्ड वेन ही बिकम्स टू एंटैंगल्ड इन दि फॉलोइंग सिक्स एक्टिविटीज वन ईटिंग मोर दैन नेसेसरी और कलेक्टिंग मोर फंड दैन रिक्वायर्ड to over and devouring for mundane things so that are very difficult to obtain three talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters fourth practicing the spiritual rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of scriptures and working independently or whimsically number 5 associating with worldly minded person who are not interested in krishna consciousness and sixth being greedy for mundane achievements purport human life is meant for plain living and high thinking since all conditioned living beings are under the control of lord's third energy this material world is designed so that one is obliged to work the supreme personality of godhead has three primary energies or potencies the first is called antaranga shakti 
or the internal potency. The second is called Tathastha Shakti or the marginal potency. The third is called Bahiranga Shakti or the external potency. The living entities constitute the marginal potency potency and they are situated between the internal and external potencies being subordinate as eternal servants of the supreme personality of godhead the jeev atmas or atomic living entities must remain under the control of either the internal or external potency when they are under the control of internal potency they display their natural constitutional activity namely constant engagement in devotional service of the lord this is stated in bhagavad gita 9.1 mahatmanastu mam path devim prakritim ashritaha bhajantaye anye manso gyatva bhutadim vayam Tanoprata, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. The word Mahatma refers to those who are broad-minded, not cripple-minded. Cripple-minded persons always engaged in satisfying their senses, sometimes expand their activities in order to do good for others through some Samism like nationalism, humanitarianism, or altruism. They may reject personal sense gratification for the sense gratification of others, like the members of their family, community, or society, either national or international. Actually, all this is extended sense gratification from personal to communal to social. This may also be very good from the material point of view, but such activities have no spiritual value. The basis of such activity is sense gratification, either personal or extended. Only when a person gratifies the sense of the Supreme Lord can he be called a Mahatma or broad-minded person. In the above quoted verse from Bhagavad Gita, the words uh, Daivim, Prakritim refer to the control of the internal potency or pleasure potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This pleasure potency is manifested as Srimati Radharani or her expansion Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. When the individual jiva souls are under the control of internal energy, their only engagement is the satisfaction of Krishna or Vishnu. This is the position of a Mahatma. If one is not a Mahatma, he is a Duratma or a crippled-minded person. Uh, such mentality, crippled, Duratma, are put under the control of Lord's external potency, Mahamaya. Indeed, all living entities within this material world are under the control of Maha Maya. Those uh, whose business is to subject them to the influence of threefold miseries Adhi, Devika, Klesha, sufferings caused by the demigods, uh, such uh, as uh, droughts, uh, earthquakes, or storms. Adhi, Bhautika, Klesha, Sufferings caused by the other living entities like insects or enemies. Or Adhyatmika, Klesha, sufferings caused by one's own body or mind such as mental and physical infirmities. Daiva Bhatika, Heta Vaha, uh, the conditioned souls uh, con subjected to these three miseries by the control of the external energy suffer various difficulties. The main purpose confronting the conditioned souls is the repetition of birth, old age, disease and death. In the material world, one has to work for the maintenance of the body and soul. But how can one perform such work in a way that is favorable for the execution of Krishna consciousness? 
everyone requires possessions such as food grains clothing money and other things necessary for the maintenance of the body but one should not collect more than necessary for his actual basic needs if this is natural principle if this natural principle is followed there will be no difficulty in maintaining the body according to the nature's arrangements living entities lower on the evolutionary scale do not eat or collect more than necessary consequently in the animal kingdom there is generally no economic problem or scarcity of necessities if a bag of rice is placed in a public place birds will come to eat a few grains and go away a human being however will take away the whole bag uh, he will eat all his stomach can hold and then try to keep the rest in storage according to scriptures this collecting of more than necessary atyahara is prohibited now the entire world is suffering because of it collecting and eating more than necessary also causes priyasa or unnecessary and devour for gods by god's arrangement anyone in any part of the world can live very peacefully if he has some land and a milk cow there is no need for a man to move from one place to another to earn a livelihood or one can produce food grains locally and get milk from cows that can solve all economic problems fortunately man has been given higher intelligence for the cultivation of krishna consciousness or the understanding of god one's relationship with him and the ultimate goal of life love of god unfortunately so called civilized man not caring for god realization utilizes his intelligence to get more than necessary and simply eat to satisfy the tongue by god's arrangement there is sufficient scope for the production of milk and grains for human beings all over the world but instead of using their higher intelligence to cultivate god consciousness so called intelligent men misuse their intelligence to produce many unnecessary and unwanted things thus factories slaughterhouses brothels and liquor shops are open if people are advised not to collect too many goods eat too much or work and necessarily to possess artificial amenities they think they are being advised to return to a primitive way of life generally people do not like to accept plain living and high thinking this is their unfortunate position human life is meant for god realization and the human being is given higher intelligence for this purpose those who believe that the higher intelligence is meant to attain the higher state uh, should uh, follow the instructions of the vedic literature by taking such instruction from the higher authorities one can actually become situated in the perfect knowledge and give real meaning to life in shrimad bhagavatam 1.2.9 shri suta goswami describes the pro proper human dharma in this way dharmasya hryapavargasya nartho artha yopak kalpate nathasya dharme kantasya kamo labhai hi smritaha all occupational engagements dharma are certainly meant for ultimate liberation uh, they should never be performed for material gain furthermore one who is engaged in ultimate occupational service dharma should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification the first step in human civilization consists of occupational engagements performed according to the scripture injunctions the higher intelligence of a human being should be trained to understand basic dharma in human society there are various religious conceptions characterized as hindu christian hebrew muhammad muhammadan buddhist and so on for without religion human society is no man better than animal society as stated of above dharmasya hi apavargasya 
Nartho Arthopya Kalpate, religion is meant for attaining emancipation, not for getting bread. Sometimes human society manufactures a system of so-called religion aimed at material advancement, but that is far from the purpose of true dharma. Religion entails understanding the law of God because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of the material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of uh, atyahara or an excessive desire for such prosperity. True re religion, however, instructs people to be satisfied with the bare necessities of life while cultivating Krishna consciousness. Even though we require economic development, true religion allows it only for supplying the bare necessities of material existence. Jivasya Tattva the real purpose of life is to inquire about the absolute truth. If our endeavor, priyasa, is not to inquire about the absolute truth, we will simply increase our endeavor to satisfy our artificial needs. A spiritual aspirant should avoid mundane endeavor. Another impediment is prajalpa unnecessary talking when we mix with a few friends we immediately begin unnecessary talking sounding just like croaking to toads if we must talk we should talk about krishna consciousness movement those outside of the krishna consciousness movement are interested in reading heaps of newspapers magazines and novels solving crossword puzzles and doing many other nonsensical things in this fashion people simply waste their valuable time and energy in the western countries old men retired from active life play cards fish watch television and debate about useless socio-political schemes. All these and other frivolous activities are included in the Prajalpa category. Intelligent persons interested in Krishna consciousness should never take part in such activities. Jana Sangha refers to associating with persons not interested in Krishna consciousness. One should strictly avoid such association. Srila Narottama Das Thakur has therefore advised us to live only in the association of Krishna conscious devotees, Bhakta Sane Vasa. One should always engage in the service of the Lord in the association of the Lord's devotees. Association with those engaged in a similar line of business is very conducive to advancement in that business. Consequently, materialistic persons from various associations and clubs to enhance their endeavors. For example, in the business world, we find such instruct institutions uh, as the stock exchange, and Chamber of Commerce. Similarly, we have established the International Society of Krishna Consciousness to give people an opportunity to associate with those who have not forgotten Krishna. This is a spiritual association offered by our ISKCON movement in increasing uh, and is increasing day by day. Many people from different parts of the world are joining the society to awaken their dormant Krishna consciousness. Sri Labhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes in his uh, Anuvriti commentary that too much endeavor to acquire knowledge on the part of mental speculators or dry philosophers falls within the category of uh, Atyahara, collecting more than needed. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, the endeavor of philosophical speculators to write volumes of books on dry philosophy devoid of Krishna consciousness is entirely futile. The work of Karmis who write volumes of books on economic development who also falls within the category of Atyahara. Similarly, those who have no desire for Krishna consciousness and who are simply interested in possessing more and more material things, either in the shape of scientific knowledge or monetary gain, are all included under the control of Atyahara. Karmis labor to accumulate more and more money 
for future generations only because they do not know their future position. Interested only in getting more and more money for their sons and grandsons, such foolish persons do not even know what their position is going to be in their next life. There are many incidents that illustrate this, this point. Once a great karmi accumulated a vast fortune for his sons and grandsons, but later, according to his karma, he took his birth in a cobbler's house located near the building which in his previous life uh, he had constructed for his children. It so happened that when this very cobbler came to his former house, his former sons and grandsons beat him with shoes. Unless the karmis and the jnanis become interested in Krishna consciousness, they will simply continue to waste their life in fruitless activities. Accepting some of these scriptural rules and regulations for immediate benefit as utilitarian advocates uh, uh, is called uh, Niyam Agraha and neglecting the rules and regulations of the Shastras uh, meant for spiritual development is called Niyama Agraha. The word Agraha means eagerness to accept and Agraha means failure to accept. By the addition of either of these two words, the word Niyama, rules and regulations, the word Niyama Agraha is formed. Thus, Niyama Agraha has a twofold meaning that is understood according to the particular combination of words. Those interested in Krishna consciousness should not be eager to accept rules and regulations for economic advancement, yet they should very faithfully accept scriptural rules and regulations for advancement of Krishna consciousness. They should strictly follow the regulative principles by avoiding illicit sex, meat eating, gambling and intoxication. One should also avoid association with Mayavadis who simply blaspheme Vaishnavas, the devotees, Bhukti Kamis who are interested in material happiness, Mukti Kamis who desire liberation from merging in the existence of the formless absolute Brahman and Siddhi Kamis who desire the perfection of mystic yoga practice are classified as Atiharis. To associate with such persons is not at all desirable. Desires to expand the mind of perfecting mystic yoga, merging in the existence of Brahman or attaining whimsical material prosperity are all included within the category of greed, lawlia. All attempts uh, to acquire such material benefits, uh, or so-called spiritual advancement, are impediments on the path of Krishna consciousness. Modern warfare waged between capitalist and communist uh, is due to their avoiding the advice of Srila Rupa Goswami regarding Atyahara. Modern capitalists uh, accumulate more wealth than necessary, and the communists envious of their prosperity want to nationalize all wealth and property. Unfortunately, the communists do not know how to solve the problem of wealth and the distribution. Consequently, when the wealth of the capitalist falls in the hands of the communist, no solution results. Opposed to these two philosophies, the Krishna conscious ideology states that all wealth belongs to Krishna. Thus, unless all wealth comes under the administration of Krishna, there can be no solution to the economic problem of mankind. Nothing can be solved by placing wealth in the hands of communists or the capitalists. So, if a hundred dollar bill is lying on the street, someone may pick it up and uh, put it in his pocket. Such a man is not honest. Another man may see the money and decide to let it remain there, thinking that he should not touch another's property. Although the second man does not steal the money for his own purposes, he is unaware of its proper use. The third man who sees the $100 bill may pick it up and find the man who lost it and deliver it to him. This man does not steal the money to spend for himself, nor does he neglect it and let it lie 
industry by taking it and delivering it to the man who has lost it. This man is both honest and wise. Simply transferring wealth from capitalists to communists cannot solve the problem of modern politics. For it has been demonstrated that when a communist gets money, he uses it for his own sense gratification. The wealth of the world actually belongs to Krishna and every living entity, man and animal, um, has the birthright to use God's property for his maintenance. When one takes more than his maintenance requires, he, a capitalist or a communist, uh, he is a thief. And such uh, he is liable to be punished uh, by the law of nature. The wealth of the world should be used for the welfare of all living entities, for this is the plan of the mother nature. Everyone has the right to live by utilizing the wealth of the Lord. When people learn the art of scientifically utilizing the Lord's property, they will no longer encroach upon one another's rights. Then an ideal society can be formed. The basic principle for such a spiritual society is stated in the five mantras of Sri Ishok Nishad. Ishvasyam idam sarvam yaktincha jagatyam jagat ten tyaktain bunjitha ma gudaha kasya svid dhanam. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself which are set aside for his quota and should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong. Krishna conscious devotees know very well that this material world is designed by the complete arrangement of the Lord to fulfill the necessities of life for all living beings without their having to encroach upon the life or rights of one another. This complete arrangement affords the proper quota of wealth for everyone according to his real needs and thus everyone may live peacefully according to the principles of plain living and high thinking. Unfortunately, materialists who have neither the faith in the plan of God nor any aspiration for higher spiritual development misuse their God-given intelligence only to augment their material possessions. They devise many systems such as capitalism and materialistic communism for uh, advancement uh, of their material positions. Uh, they are not interested in the law of God or in a higher goal, always anxious for fulfillment of their unlimited desires for sense gratification. They are conspicuous by their ability to exploit their fellow living beings. When human society gives up uh, these elementary faults enumerated by Srila Rupa Goswami, Atihara, etc., all enmity will cease between men and animal, capitalists and communists, and so forth. In addition, all problems of economic and political maladjustments and instability will be solved. This pure consciousness is awakened by the proper spiritual education and practice offered scientifically by the Krishna Consciousness Movement. This Krishna Consciousness Movement offers a spiritual community that can bring about a peaceful condition in the world. Every intelligent man should purify his consciousness and rid himself of the above mentioned six hindrances to devotional service by taking wholehearted shelter of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Text 3 Utsahan Nishyad Dharyat Tat Tat Karma Pravart Nat Sang Tyagat Sato Vritih Shad Bheer Bhakti Tasadhyati Translation 
there are six principles favorable to the execution of pure devotional service. One, being enthousi enthusiastic. Two, enduring with confidence. Three, being patient. Fourth, fourth, acting according to regulative principles such as uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam, hearing, chanting, and remem remembering Krishna. Fifth, abandoning the association of non devotees. And sixth, following in the footsteps of the various Acharyas. These six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service. Purport. Devotional service is not a matter of sentimental speculation or imaginative ecstasy. Its substance is practical activity. Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Das Amrit Sindhu uh, has defined uh, um, devotional service as follows. Anye Abhilashita Shunyam Gyan Karmadhyanyavritam Anukulyan Krishnanu Shilanam Bhaktir Ruttama Uttama Bhakti or unalloyed devotion unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead Shri Krishna involves the rendering of devotional service in a way that is favorable to the Lord. This devotional service should be free from any extraneous motive and devoid of the fruitive karma, impersonal jnana and all other selfish desires. Bhakti is a sort of cultivation. As soon as we say cultivation, we must refer to activity. Cultivation of spirituality does not mean sitting down idly for meditation, as some pseudo-yogis teach. Such idle meditation may be good for those who have no information of devotional service, and for this reason it is sometimes recommended as a way to check distracting materialistic activities. Meditation means stopping all nonsensical activities, at least for the time being. Devotional service, however, not only puts an end to all nonsensical mundane activities, but also engages one in meaningful devotional activities. Sri Pralada Maharaj recommends Shravnam Kirtanam Vishnu Smarnam Pada Sevanam Arjanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam. The nine processes of devotional service are as follows. Number one, hearing the name and glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Number two, chanting his glories. Number three, remembering the Lord. Number four, serving the Lord's feet. Number five, worshipping the deity. Number six, offering obeisance unto the Lord. Number seven, acting as the Lord's servant. Number eight, making friends with the Lord. Number nine is surrendering oneself fully to the Lord. Shravnam or hearing is the first step in acquiring transcendental knowledge. One should not give oral reception to unauthorized persons, but should approach the proper person as recommended in Bhagavad Gita 4.34. Tad vidhi prani patin pari prashnin sevaya updekshanti te gyanam gyani nasta tatva darshi naha. Just try to learn the truth of approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self realized soul can impart knowledge unto him because he has seen the truth. It is further recommended in the Mundaka Upanishad. Tad Vijnanartham sa gurum eva bhi gachet. To understand that transcendental science, one must approach a bona fide spiritual master. Thus, this method of submissively receiving transcendental confidential knowledge is not merely based on mental speculation. In this regard, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami, Brahmanda Brahmite Kon Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. In the course of traversing 
the universal creation of Brahma, some fortunate soul may receive the seed of Bhakti Lata, the creeper of devotional service. This is all by the grace of Guru and Krishna. Chaitanya Charitramrit Madhya Leela 19.151 The material world is a place of confinement for the living entities who are by nature Anandya Maya, pleasure seeking. Anandya Maya, pleasure seeking. They are actually wanting to be free from the confinement of this world of conditional happiness, but not knowing the process of liberation, they are bound to transmigrate from one species of life to another and from one planet to another. In this way, the living entities are wandering uh, throughout the material universe. When by good fortune, one comes in contact with a pure devotee and hears from him patiently, one begins to follow the path of devotional service. Such an opportunity is offered to a person who is sincere. The International Society of Krishna Consciousness is giving such a chance to humanity at large. If by fortune one takes advantage of this opportunity to engage in devotional service, the path of liberation immediately opens. One should accept this opportunity to return home and back to Godhead very enthusiastically. Without enthusiasm, one cannot be successful. Even in the material world, one has to be very enthusiastic in his particular field of activity in order to become successful. A student, businessman, artist or anyone else who wants success in his line must be enthusiastic. Similarly, one has to be very enthusiastic in devotional service. Enthusiasm means action. But action for whom? The answer is that the one should always act for Krishna. Krishna Artha Akhila Cheshta Bhakti Das Amrit Sindhu In all phases of life, one has to perform devotional activities under the direction of the spiritual master in order to attain perfection in Bhakti Yoga. It is not that one has to confine or narrow one's activities. Krishna is all-pervading. Therefore, nothing is independent of Krishna as Krishna himself states in Bhagavad Gita 9.4. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avayakta murtina mat sthani sarva bhutani na chaham tesva avasthita. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, one has to make everything favorable for Krishna's service. For example, at present, we are using our dictaphone. The materialist who invented this machine intended it for businessmen or writers of mundane subject matters. He certainly never thought of using a dictaphone in God's service, but we are using this dictaphone to write Krishna conscious literature. Of course, the manufacturer of the dictaphone is wholly, wholly within the energy of Krishna. All the parts of the instrument, including the electronic functions, are made from different combinations and interactions of the five basic types of material energy, namely Bhumi, Jala, Agni, Vayu and Akasha. The inventor used his brains to make this complicated machine and his brain as well as the ingredients were supplied by Krishna. According to the statement of Krishna, Mat Isthani Sarva Bhutani, everything is depending on my energy. Thus, the devotee can understand that since, uh, since nothing is independent of Krishna's energy, everything should be Dovetailed in his service, endeavor executed with intelligence in Krishna consciousness is called utsaha or enthusiasm. The devotees find the correct means by which everything can be utilized in the service of the Lord. Nirbandaha Krishna Sambandhe Yuktam Vairagya Muchyate 
The execution of devotional service is not a matter of idle meditation, but practical action in the foreground of spiritual life. These activities must be executed with patience. One should not be impatient in Krishna consciousness. Indeed, this Krishna consciousness movement was started single-handedly and in the beginning there was no response. But because we continued to execute our devotional activities with patience, people gradually began to understand the importance of this movement and now they are eagerly participating. One should not be impatient in discharging devotional service, but should take instructions from the spiritual master and execute them with patience, depending on the mercy of Guru and Krishna. The successful execution of Krishna conscious activities requires both patience and confidence. A newly married girl naturally expects offsprings from her husband, but she cannot expect to have them immediately after marriage. Of course, as soon as she is married, she can attempt to get a child, but she must surrender to her husband, confident that her child will develop and be born in due time. Similarly, in devotional service, surrender means that one has to become confident. The devotee thinks, Avasya Rakshibe Krishna. Krishna will surely protect me and give me help for the successful execution of the devotional service. This is called confidence. As already explained, one should not be idle, but should be very enthusiastic about executing the regulative principles. Tat tat karma pravartana, neglect for the regulative principles, will destroy devotional service. In this Krishna consciousness movement, there are four basic regulative principles forbidding illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, and intoxication. A devotee must be very enthusiastic about following these principles. If he becomes slack in following any one of them, his progress will certainly be checked. Srila Rupa Goswami therefore recommended Tat Tat Karma Nata. One must strictly follow the regulative principles of Vedahi Bhakti. In addition to these four prohibitions, Yama, there are positive regulative principles, niyama, such as the daily chanting of 16 rounds of the Chapa Mala beads. These regulative activities must be faithfully performed with enthusiasm. This is called Tat Tat Karma Pravartana or varied engagement in devotional service. Furthermore, in order to be successful in devotional service, one must give up the association of undesirable people. These include karmis, jnanis, yogis and other non-devotees. Once Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked by one of his householder devotees about the general principles of Vaishnavism as well as uh, the general routine activities of the Vaishnava. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately replied, Asat Sangha Tyaga, A Vaishnava Achara. Characteristically, a Vaishnava is one who gives up the association of worldly people or non-devotee. Srila Narottama Das Thakur has therefore recommended, Tandera Charan Sevi Bhakt Sen Vasa. One has to live in the company of pure devotees and execute the regulative principles laid down by the previous Acharyas, the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatana Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Raghunatha Das Goswami, Sri Gopal Bhatt Goswami and Sri Raghunath Bhatt Goswami. If one lives in the association of devotees, there is little chance of associating with non-devotees. The International Society of Krishna Consciousness uh, is opening uh, many centers just to invite people to live in the company of devotees and practice the regulative principles of spiritual life. Devotional service means transcendental activities. On the transcendental platform, there is no contamination by the three modes of material.
nature. This is called Vishud Sattva, the platform of pure goodness or goodness free from contamination by the qualities of passion and ignorance. In this Krishna consciousness movement, we require everyone to rise early in the morning by 4 a.m. and attend Mangala Aarti or morning worship. Then read Srimad Bhagavatam, perform Kirtana and so forth. Thus we hold continuous activities in devotional service 24 hours daily. This is called the Sato Vrati or following the footsteps of the various Acharyas who expertly filled every moment of time with Krishna conscious activities. If one strictly follows the advice given in the verse by Srila Rupa Goswami, namely being enthusiastic, being confident, being patient, giving up the association of unwanted person, following the regulative principles and remaining in the association of devotees, one is sure to advance in devotional service. In this regard, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur remarks that the cultivation of knowledge by philosophical speculation and the cult collection of mundane opulence by the advancement of fruitive activities and the desire for yoga siddhis, material perfection, are all contrary to the principle of devotional service. One has to become thoroughly callous to such non-permanent activities and turn his intention instead to the regulative principles of devotional service. According to Bhagavad Gita 2.69, Ya Nisha Sarvabhuta Naam Tasyam Jagrati Sayami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Munehe What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled and the time of awakening for all beings is the night for the introspective sage. Engagement in the devotional service of the Lord is the life and soul of the living entity. It is desired goal and supreme perfection of human life. One has to become confident about this and one also has to be confident but all that all activities other than devotional service such as mental speculation, fruitive work or mystic endeavor will never yield any enduring benefit. Complete confidence in the path of devotional service will, will enable one to attain his desired goal, but attempting to follow other paths will only succeed in making one restless. In the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated, one must be calmly convinced that those who have given up devotional service to engage in severe austerities for other purposes are not purified in their minds despite their advanced austerities because they have no information of the transcendental loving service of the Lord. It is further stated in the seventh canto, all mental speculators and fruitive actors may perform great austerities and penances, uh, they still fall down because they do not have information about the lotus feet of the Lord. The devotees of the Lord, however, never fall down. In Bhagavad Gita 9.31, the Supreme Personality of the Godhead assures Arjuna, Ponte Pratijanihi Name Bhakta Pranshayati O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Again in Bhagavad Gita 2.40, Krishna says, Neha bhi karma naso asti pratyavayo na vidyate swalpam apyay asyay dharmasya prayate mahato bayata. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution and uh, a little advancement on this path can protect one from most dangerous type of fear. Devotional service is so pure and perfect that once having begun, one is forcibly dragged to ultimate success. Sometimes a person will give up his ordinary material engagements and out of sentiment take shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and thus 
begin the preliminary execution of devotional service even if such uh, an immature uh, devotee falls down there is no loss on his part on the other hand what is the gain of one who executes the prescribed duties according to his varna and ashrama but does not take to devotional service although a fallen devotee may take his next birth in a low family his devotional service will nonetheless resume from where it left off devotional service is a hetuki a pratihata it is not the effect of any mundane cause nor can it be terminated by any mundane cause or permanently curtailed by any material interruption therefore a devotee should be confident about his engagement and should not be very interested in the activities of the karmis gyanis and the yogis there are certainly many good qualities among fruitive actors philosophical speculators and mystic yogis but all good qualities automatically develop in character of a devotee no extraneous and devour is needed as confirmed by shrimad bhagavatam 5.18.12 all the good qualities of the demigods manifest progressively in one who has developed pure devotional service because a devotee is non interested in any material activity he does not become materially contaminated he is immediately situated in the plat form of transcendental life however one who engages in mundane activities be he a so called gyani yogi karmi philanthropist nationalist or whatever cannot attain the higher stage of mahatma he remains a duratma or a crippled minded person according to bhagavad gita 9.13 सर्विस me as the supreme personality of god had original and inexhaustible since all the devotees of the lord are under the protection of his supreme potency they should not deviate from the path of devotional service and take uh, to the path of karmis gyanis or yogis this is is called utsaha nishyat dharyat tat tat karm pravartnat enthusiastically executing the regulative activities of devotional service with patience and confidence in this way one can advance in devotional service without hindrance text 4 dadati prati grahanati guhyam akhyati prachhati bhungte bhojyate chaiva shad vidham priti lakshnam translation offerings gifts in charity accepting charitable gifts so revealing one's mind in confidence so inquiring confidentially accepting prasada and offering prasada are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another purport in this verse shrila rupa goswami explains how to perform devotional activities in the association of other devotees there are six kind of activities number 1 giving charity to the devotees number 2 accepting from the devotees whatever they may offer in return number 3 opening one's mind to the devotees number 4 inquiring from them about the confidential service of the lord number 5 honoring prasada or the spiritual food given by the devotees and number 6 feeding the devotees with prasada an experienced devotee explains and an experienced devotee learns from him this is guhyam akhyati prachhati when a devotee distributes prasada remnants of the food offered to the supreme personality of godhead in order to maintain our spirit of devotional service we must accept this prasada as the lord's grace received through the pure devotees we should also invite pure devotees to our home offer them 
prasada and be prepared to please them in all respects. This is called bhungte bhojyate chaiva. Even in ordinary social activities, uh, uh, these six types uh, of dealings between two loving, friendly friends are absolutely necessary. For instance, when one businessman uh, wishes to contact uh, another businessman, he arranges a feast in a hotel or over the feast openly expresses what he wishes to do. He then inquires from his business friend how he should act uh, and sometimes presents are exchanged. Thus, whenever there is a dealing of preeti or love in intimate dealings, these are six activities. Uh, these six activities are executed. In the previous verse, Srila Rupa Goswami advised that one should renounce worldly association and keep company with the devotees. Sangha uh, Tyagata Sato Vrataha. The International Society of Krishna Consciousness has uh, been established to facilitate these six kinds of loving exchanges between devotees. These soci this society was started single-handedly, but because people are coming forward and dealing with the give and take policy, the society is now expanding all over the world. We are glad that people are donating very liberally to the development of the society's activities and people are also eagerly accepting whatever humble contribution we are giving them in the shape of books and magazines dealing strictly with the subject matter of Krishna consciousness. We sometimes hold Hare Krishna festivals and invite life members and friends to participate in the feasting of feasting by accepting prasada. Although most of our members come from higher rungs of society, they nonetheless come and take whatever little prasada we are able to offer them. Sometimes the members and the Supporters inquire very confidentially about the methods of performing devotional service and we try to explain this. In this way, our society is successfully spreading all over the world and the intelligentsia of all countries is gradually appreciating our Krishna conscious activities. The life of the Krishna conscious society is nourished by these six types of loving exchange amongst the members. Therefore, people must uh, give the chance to associate with the devotees of the ISKCON because simply by reciprocating in the six ways mentioned above, an ordinary man can fully revive his dormant. Krishna consciousness in Bhagavad Gita, 2.6.2, uh, it is stated, Sangat Sanjayate. Kamaha. One's desires and ambitions develop according to the company one keeps. It is often said that a man is known by his company and if an ordinary man associates with the devotees, he will certainly develop his dormant Krishna consciousness. The understanding of Krishna consciousness is innate in every living entity and it is already developed to some extent when the living entity takes a human body. It is said in Chaitanya Charitra Amrit Madhya Leela 22.107 Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhya Kabhunai Shravna Adi Shuddha Chitte Karai Uday. Your love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, the living entity naturally awakens. Since Krishna consciousness is inherent in li every living entity, Everyone should be given a chance to hear about Krishna. Simply by hearing and chanting Shravnam Kirtanam, one's heart is directly purified and one's original Krishna consciousness is immediately awakened. Krishna consciousness is not artificially imposed upon the heart. It is already there. When one chants the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the heart is cleansed of all mundane contamination. In the first stanza of Sri Sikshashtaka, uh, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Ketu darpana marjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam 
श्रेया कैरवा चंद्रिका वितरणम विद्या वधु जीवनम आनंदम बुद्धि वर्धनम प्रतिपाद पदम पूर्ण अमृत आस्वादनम सर्वात्मा स्नपनम परम विजयते श्री कृष्ण संकीर्तनम ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी श्री कृष्ण संकीर्तना विच क्लिंजेस द हार्ट ऑफ ऑल द डस्ट एक्यूमुलेटेड फॉर इयर्स एंड एक्सटिंग्विशेस द फायर ऑफ कंडीशनल लाइफ of repeated birth and death this sankirtana movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of benediction moon it is the life of all transcendental knowledge it increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious not only is the chanter of maha mantra purified but the heart of anyone who happens to hear the transcendental vibration of hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari is also cleansed even the souls embodied in the lower animals insects trees or and other species of life also becomes purified and uh, uh, prepared to become fully krishna conscious uh, simply by hearing the transcendental vibration this is uh, explained by thakura haridasa when chaitanya mahaprabhu inquired from him how living entities lower than human beings can be delivered from the material bondage haridasa thakur said that the chanting of the holy names is so powerful that even if one chants in the remotest part of the jungle the trees and the animals will advance in krishna conscious simply by hearing the vibration this was actually proved by shrila chaitanya mahaprabhu himself when he passed uh, through the forest of charakanda uh, at the time of at the time the tigers snakes deer and all other animals abandoned their natural animosity and began chanting and dancing in sankirtana of course we cannot imitate the activities of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu but we should follow his footsteps we are not powerful enough to enchant the lower animals such as tigers snakes cats and dogs or entice them to dance but by chanting the holy names of the lord we can actually convert many people throughout the world to krishna consciousness contributing or distributing the holy name of the lord is a sublime example of contributing or giving charity the dadati principle by the same token one must follow the prati graha niti principle and be willing and ready to receive transcendental gift one should inquire about the krishna consciousness movement and open his mind in order to understand the situation of this material world thus the guhyam akhyati prachati principles can be served the members of the international society of krishna consciousness invite the society's members and supporters to dine with them when they hold love feasts in all the branches every sunday many interested people come to honor prasada and whenever possible they invite members of the society to their homes and feed them uh, sumptuously with prasada in this way both the members of the society and the general public are benefited people should give up the company of so called yogis gyanis karmis and the philanthropist because their association can benefit no one if one really wants to attain the goal of human life he should associate with devotees of krishna consciousness movement because it is the only movement that teaches one how to develop love of god religion is the special function of human society and it constitutes the distinction between human society and animal society animal society has no church mosques or religious system in all parts of the world however down trodden human society may be there is uh, some system 
uh, of religion even tribal aborigines uh, in the jungles uh, have uh, a system of religion when a religious system develops and turns into love of god it is successful as stated in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam 1.2.6 sa vai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhakti adyokshaje अहेतु की अप्रतिहता या यात्मा सु प्रसिद्धियती सुप्रीम ऑक्यूपेशन धर्म ऑफ ऑल ह्यूमैनिटी इज दैट बाय विच मैन कैन अटेन टू लविंग डिवोशनल सर्विस ऑन टू दी ट्रांसडेंटल लॉर्ड सच डिवोशनल सर्विस मस्ट बी अनमोटिवेटेड एंड अनइंटरप्टेड इन ऑर्डर टू कंप्लीटली सेटिस्फाई दी सेल्फ if the members of the human society actually want peace of mind tranquility and friendly relations between men and nations they must follow the krishna conscious system of religion by which they can develop their dormant love for krishna the supreme personality of godhead as soon as people do so their minds will immediately be filled with peace and tranquility In this regard, Sri Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur warns all devotees engaged in broadcasting the Krishna consciousness movement not to speak to the impersonalists, Mayavadi, who are always determined to oppose such theistic movements. The world is full of Mayavadis and atheists. and the political parties of the world take advantage of the Mayavada and other atheistic. of philosophies to promote materialism sometimes they even back a strong party to oppose the krishna consciousness movement the mayavadis and other atheists do not want the krishna consciousness movement to develop because it educates people in god consciousness such is the policy of atheists there is no benefit in feeding a snake milk and banana because the snake will never be satisfied uh, on the contrary by taking milk and bananas the snake simply becomes more poisonous kevalam visha vardhanam if a snake is given milk to drink its poison simply increases for a simple reason we should not disclose our minds to the serpent mayavadis and karmis such disclosures will never help it is best to avoid association with them completely and never ask them about anything confidential because they cannot give good advice nor should we extend invitations to mayavadis and atheists nor accept their invitations for by such intimate intermingling we may become affected by their atheist mentality sangat sanjayate kamaha it is the negative injunction of this verse that we should refrain from giving anything to or accepting anything from the mayavadis and atheists shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has also warned vishyar an khaile dusht hai man by eating food prepared by worldly people one's mind becomes wicked unless one is very advanced he is unable to utilize everyone's contribution to further the krishna consciousness movement therefore on principle one should not accept charity from the mayavadis and atheists Indeed Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has forbidden devotees to associate even with ordinary men who are too addicted to material sense gratification the conclusion is that we should always keep company with devotees observe the regulative devotional principles follow in the footsteps of the acharyas and in full obedience carry out the orders of the spiritual master In this way we shall be able to develop our devotional service and dormant krishna consciousness the devotee who is neither a nef neophyte nor a maha bhagavata a greatly advanced devotee but is within the middle status of devotional service is expected to love the supreme personality of the godhead make friends with the devotees show favor to the ignorant and reject the jealous and demonic 
in this verse there is a brief mention of the process of making loving transactions with the supreme personality of godhead and making friends with the devotees according to the dadati principle an advanced devotee is supposed to spend at least 50% of his income on the service of the lord and his devotees shila rupa goswami had has set such an example in his life when he decided to retire he distributed 50% of his life's earning to krishna's service and 25% to his relatives and kept 25% for personal emergencies this example should be followed by all devotees whatever one's income 50% should be spent on behalf of krishna and his devotees and this will fulfill the demands of tadati in the next verse shila rupa goswami informs us what kind of vaishnava should be selected as a friend and how vaishnavas should be served text 5 krishneti yasya giri tam mansa griyate dikshasti chet pranati bishr bhajantim isham susrushya bhajan vijam ananyam anyanin dadi शून्यम हेगम इप्शिता संगा लब दया translation one should mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name of lord krishna one should offer humble obeisances to the devotees who have undergone spiritual initiation diksha and is engaged in worshiping the deity and one should associate with and faithfully serve that pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service and whose heart is completely devoid of the propensity to criticize others purport in order to intelligently apply the sixfold loving reciprocation mentioned in the previous verse one must select proper persons with careful discrimination shila rupa goswami therefore advises that we should meet with the vaishnavas in an appropriate way according to their particular status in this verse he tells us how to deal with three types of devotees the kanishtha adhikari the madhyam adhikari and the uttama adhikari the kanishtha adhikari is a neophyte who has received the hari nama initiation from the spiritual master and is trying to chant the holy name of krishna one should respect such a person within his mind as a kanishtha vaishnava a madhyama adhikari has received spiritual initiation from the spiritual master and has been fully engaged by him in the transcendental loving service of the lord the madhyam adhikari should be considered to be situated midway in devotional service the uttam adhikari or highest devotee is one who is very advanced in devotional service an uttam adhikari is not interested in blaspheming others his heart is completely clean and uh, he has attained the realized state of unalloyed krishna consciousness according to shrila rupa goswami the association and the service of such a mahabhagavata or perfect vaishnava are most desirable one should not remain a kanishtha adhikari who is situated on the lowest platform of devotional service and is interested only in worshiping the deities in the temple such a devotee is described in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam 11.2.47 acharya me bharaye pujam yaha shadyate na tad bhakteshu chanyeshu sa bhakta prakritah smritah a person who is very faithful engaged faithfully engaged in the worship of the deity in the temple but who does not know how to behave towards a devotee or people in general is called a prakrita 
भक्ता और कनिष्ठ अधिकारी वन देयर फोर हैज टू राइज हिम सेल्फ फ्रॉम द पोजिशन ऑफ कनिष्ठ अधिकारी टू द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ मध्यम अधिकारी द मध्यम अधिकारी इज डिस्क्राइब इन द श्रीमद भागवतम इलेवन पॉइंट टू पॉइंट फोर सिक्स इन दिस वे तदिनेशु बालिशेशु विशत्सु चा प्रेम मैत्री कृपा उपेक्षा यह करो तू सा मध्यमा दि मध्यमा अधिकारी इज अ डिवोटी हु वर्शिप्स द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड एज द हाईएस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ लव मेक्स फ्रेंड्स विद द लॉर्ड्स डिवोटीज इज मर्सीफुल ड्यू टू द इग्नोरेंट एंड अवॉइड्स दोस हु आर एनवियस बाय नेचर दिस इज द वे टू कल्टीवेट डिवोशनल सर्विस प्रॉपर्ली therefore in this verse shila rupa goswami has advised us to on how to treat various devotees we can see from practical experience that there are different types of vaishnavas the prakrita sahajiyas generally chant the hari krishna maha mantra yet they are attached to women money and intoxication Although such persons may chant the holy name of the Lord, they are not yet properly purified. Such people should be respected within one's mind, uh, but their association should be avoided. Those who are innocent but simply carry carried away by bad association should be shown favor if they are eager to receive proper instructions from pure devotees. but those new fight devotees who are actually initiated by the bona fide spiritual master and are seriously engaged in carrying out the orders of the spiritual master should be offered respectful obeisances in this krishna consciousness movement a chance is given to everyone without discrimination of caste creed or color everyone is invited to join this movement sit with us and take prasada and hear about krishna when we see this that someone is actually interested in krishna consciousness and wants to be initiated we accept him as a disciple for the chanting of the holy name of the lord when a new fight devotee is actually initiated and engaged in devotional service by the orders of the spiritual master he should be accepted immediately as a bona fide vaishnava and the obeisances should be offered unto him out of many vaishnavas one may be found to be very seriously engaged in the service of the lord and strictly following the regulative principles chanting the prescribed numbers of rounds of japa beads and always thinking of how to expand the krishna consciousness movement such a vaishnava should be accepted as an uttama adhikari a highly advanced devotee and his association should always be sought uh, the process of by which a devotee becomes attached to krishna is described in chaitanya charitra amrit antya leela 4.192 diksha kale bhakt kare atma samarpan se kale krishna tare kare atma sam at the time of initiation a devotee fully surrenders to the service of the lord krishna accepts him to be as good as he himself diksha or spiritual initiation is explained in the bhakti sandarbha 868 by shrila jeeva goswami uh, divyam gyanam yato dadhyat kuryat papasya saksyam tasmat दीक्षते सा प्रोक्ता देसिकय तत्वा कोविदहे बाय दीक्षा वन जनरली बिकम्स डिसइंटरेस्टेड इन मटेरियल एन्जॉयमेंट एंड ग्रेजुअली बिकम्स इंटरेस्टेड इन स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ वी हैव सीन मेनी प्रैक्टिकल एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दिस स्पेशली इन यूरोप एंड अमेरिका मेनी स्टूडेंट्स हु कम टू अस फ्रॉम रिच एंड रिस्पेक्टेबल फैमिलीज क्विकली लूज ऑल इंटरेस्ट इन मटेरियल एन्जॉयमेंट and become very eager to enter into spiritual life although they come from very wealthy families many of them accept living conditions that are not very comfortable 
indeed for Krishna's sake they are prepared to accept any living conditions as long as they can live in the temple and associate with the Vaishnavas. When one becomes so disinterested in material enjoyment, he becomes fit for initiation by the spiritual master. For the advancement of a spiritual life, Srimad Bhagavatam 6.1 he prescribes tapsa brahmacharyen shamin chadamin cha. When a person is serious about accepting diksha, he must be prepared to practice austerity, celibacy, and control of the mind and body. If one is so prepared and is desirous of receiving a spiritual enlightenment, divyam jnanam, he is fit for being initiated. Divyam Gyanam is actually technically called uh, Tad Vigyana or knowledge about the Supreme. Tad Vigyana Tham Sa Gurum Evam Pigacheta. When one is interested in the transcendental subject matter of the Absolute Truth, he is initiated. Such a person uh, should approach a spiritual master in order to take diksha. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.3.21 also prescribes Tasmat Gurum Prapadhyata Jikyasu Shreya Uttamam. When one is actually interested in the transcendental science of the absolute truth, he should approach a spiritual master. One should not accept a spiritual master without following his instructions. Nor should one accept a spiritual master just to make a fashionable show of the spiritual life. One must be Jigyasu, very much inquisitive to learn from the bona fide the spiritual master. The, the inquiries one makes uh, should be strictly pertaining to the transcendental science. Jigyasu Shreya Uttama. The word Uttama refers to the to that which is above material knowledge. Tama means the darkness of the material world and Ut means transcendental. Generally, people are very interested in inquiring about the mundane subject matters. But when one has lost such interest and is simply interested in transcendental subject matters, he is quite fit for being initiated. When one is actually initiated by the bona fide spiritual master and when he is seriously engages in the service of the Lord, he should be accepted as the Madhyama Adhikari. The chanting of the holy names of the Krishna is so sublime that if one chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra offenselessly, carefully avoiding the ten offenses, he can certainly be gradually elevated to the point of understanding the understanding that there is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself. One who has reached such an understanding should be very much respected by new fight devotees. One should know for certain that without chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, one cannot be a proper candidate for advancement in Krishna consciousness. In Sri Chaitanya Charitra Amrit Madhya Leela 22.69, it is said, Jahar Komal Shraddha Se Kanishth Jana Krame Krame Te Tehyo Bhakta Hoibo Uttam One whose faith is soft and pliable is called a neophyte. But by gradually following the process, he will rise to the platform of a first-class devotee. Everyone begins his devotional life from the new fight stage. But if one properly finishes chanting the prescribed number of rounds of Harinama, he is elevated step by step to the highest platform, Uttama Adhikari. The Krishna Consciousness Movement prescribes 16 rounds daily because people in the western countries cannot concentrate for long periods while chanting on beads. Therefore, the minimum number of rounds is prescribed. However, Srila Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur used to say that unless one chants at least 64 rounds of Japa, 100,000 names, he is considered fallen. Patita 
according to his calculation practically every one of us is fallen but because we are trying to serve the supreme lord with all seriousness and uh, without duplicity we can expect the mercy of lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who is famous as patit pavana the deliverer of the fallen when shila satya raja khan a great devotee of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu asked lord how a vaishnava could be recognized the lord replied prabhu kahe jar mukhe shuni ek bar krishna naam se pujje shreshth sabakar if one hears a person say even once the word krishna that person should be accepted as the best man out of the common group chaitanya charitamrit madhya leela 15.106 lord chaitanya mahaprabhu continued atev jar mukhe ek krishna naam sei tavashnav karhi tarha samman one who is interested in chanting the holy name of krishna or who by practice likes to chant krishna's names should be accepted as a vaishnava and offered respect sir as such at least within one's mind chaitanya charitamrit madhya leela 15.111 one of our friends a famous english musician has become attracted to chanting the holy names of krishna and even in his records he has several several times mentioned the holy name of krishna at his home he offers respect to pictures of krishna and also to the preachers of krishna consciousness in all regards he has a very high estimation of krishna's name and krishna's activities therefore we offer respects to him without reservation for we are actually seeing that this gentleman is advancing gradually in krishna consciousness such a person should always be shown respect the conclusion is that anyone who is trying to advance in krishna consciousness by regularly chanting the holy name should always be respected by vaishnavas on the other hand we have witnessed that some of our contemporaries who are supposed to be great preachers have gradually fallen into the material conception of life because they have failed to chant the holy names of the lord while giving instruction to sanatana goswami lord chaitanya mahaprabhu divided devotional service into three categories shastra yukti nahi jane drad shraddhavan madhyam adhikari se maha bhagyavan a person whose conclusive knowledge of the shastras is not very strong but who has developed firm faith in chanting the hari krishna maha mantra and who is also undeterred in the execution of the prescribed devotional service should be considered a madhyam adhikari such a person is very fortunate chaitanya charitramrit madhya leela 22.67 a madhyam adhikari is a a shraddhavan a staunchly faithful person and he is actually a candidate for further advancement in devotional service therefore in chaitanya charitra amrit madhya leela 22.64 it is said shraddhavan jana haya bhakti adhikari uttama madhyama kanishtha shraddha anusari one becomes uh, qualified as a devotee on the elementary platform the intermediate platform and the highest platform of devotional service according to the development of his shraddha faith again in chaitanya charitra amrit madhya leela 22.62 it is said shraddha sabde shraddha shabde vishwas kahe sudrad nischay krishna bhakti kaile sarv karma krit hai by rendering transcendental service to krishna one automatically performs all subsidiary activities this confident firm faith favorable 
to the discharge of devotional service is called Shraddha. Shraddha faith in Krishna is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. Faith means strong faith. The word of Bhagavad Gita are authoritative instruction for faithful men and whatever Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita is to be accepted as it is without interpretation. This was the very way Arjuna accepted Bhagavad Gita. After hearing Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna told Krishna, Sarvam etad ritam manye yan mam vadasi keshava. O Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Bhagavad Gita 10.14 This is the correct way of understanding Bhagavad Gita and this is called Shraddha. It is not that one accepts a portion of Bhagavad Gita according to his own whimsical interpretation and then rejects another portion. This is not uh, Shraddha. Shraddha means accepting the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita in their totality, especially the last instruction, Sarva Dharma Parityaje Maam Ekam Sharnam Braja. Abandon all varieties of relation and just surrender unto me. Bhagavad Gita 18.66 When one becomes completely faithful in regard to this instruction, one's strong faith becomes the basis of advancing the spiritual life. When one fully engages in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he gradually realizes his own spiritual identity. Unless one faithfully chants the Hare Krishna Mantra, Krishna does not reveal himself. Sevan Mukhe Hi Chivadu Swam Eva Spurate Adaha Bhakti Ras Amrit Sindhu 1.2.234 we cannot realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by any artificial means. We must engage faithfully in the service of the Lord. Such service begins with the tongue. Seva, sevan Mukehi Jihavadu Which means that we should always chant the holy names of the Lord and accept Krishna Prasada. We should not chant or accept anything else. When this process is faithfully followed, the Supreme Lord reveals himself to the devotee. When a person realizes himself to be an eternal servitor of Krishna, he loses interest in everything but Krishna's service, always thinking of Krishna, devising means by which to spread the holy name of Krishna. He understands that his only business is in spreading the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Such a person is to be recognized as an Uttama Adhikari and his association should be immediately accepted according to the six processes, Dadati, Pratigraha, Nati, etc. Indeed, an advanced Uttama Adhikari, Vaishnavas, devotees should be accepted as a spiritual master. Everything one possesses should be offered to him, for it is enjoined that one should deliver whatever he has to the spiritual master. The Brahmachari is, in particular, is supposed to beg arms uh, from others and uh, offer them to the spiritual master. However, one should not uh, imitate the behavior of an advanced devotee or Mahabhagavata without being self-realized, uh, for by such imitation one will eventually become degraded. In this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami advises the devotee to be intelligent enough to distinguish between the Kanishtha Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari. The devotee should also know, know his own position and should not try to imitate a devotee situated on a higher platform. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has given some practical hints to the effect that an Uttama Adhikari Vaishnava can be recognized by his ability to convert many fallen souls into Vaishnavas. Uh, one should not uh, become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttama Adhikari.
a neophyte vaishnava or a vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well towards the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance therefore a disciple should be careful to accept an uttamadhikari as a spiritual master text 6 drishtehe swabhava janitera vapusha cha doser na prakratvam mihi bhaktajanasya pashyet gangam bhasam na kalu buddh buddh fena pankher brahma dravatam apagachati nira Translation: Being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a diseased or infirm body. According to ordinary vision such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure pure devotee but despite such seeming defects the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted it is exactly like the water of the ganges which sometimes during the rainy seasons are full of bubbles foam and mud the ganges waters do not become polluted those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in the ganges with without considering the condition of the water purport shuddha bhakti the activity of the soul proper in other words engagement in the transcendental loving service of the lord is performed in a liberated condition in bhagavad gita 14.26 it is stated mam chayu avay bicharin bhakti yogen sevate sa gunan samatiye tan brahm bhuai kalpate one who engages in full devotional service who does not fall down in any circumstance at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of brahman ave ave bicharini bhakti means unalloyed devotion a person engaged in devotional service must be free from material motives in this krishna consciousness movement one's consciousness must be changed if consciousness is aimed towards material enjoyment it is material consciousness and if it is aimed towards serving krishna it is krishna consciousness a surrendered soul serves krishna without material consideration anya abhilashita shunyam jnana karmadhyanya vritam unalloyed devotional service which is transcendental to the activities of the body and mind such as jnana mental speculation and karma fruitive work is called pure bhakti yoga bhakti yoga is the proper activity of the soul and when one actually engages in unalloyed uncontaminated devotional service he is already liberated sagunan samti priyatan krishna's devotee is not subjected to material condition even though his bodily features may appear materially conditioned one should therefore not see a pure devotee from a materialistic point of view unless one is actually a devotee he cannot see another devotee perfectly as explained in the previous verse there are three types of devotees kanishtha adhikari madhyam adhikari and uttam adhikari the kanishtha adhikari cannot distinguish between a devotee and non devotee he is simply concerned with worshiping the deity in the temple 
ke madhyam adhikari however can distinguish between the devotee and non devotee as well as between the devotee and the lord thus he treats the supreme personality of god had the devotee and the non devotee in different ways no one should criticize the bodily defects of a pure devotee if there are such defects they should be overlooked what should be taken into account is the spiritual master's main business which is devotional service pure service to the supreme lord as stated in bhagavad gita 9.30 अपिचेत सुदुराचारो भजेते माम अनन्य भाग साधुरो एव सा मंतव्य सम्यक व्यवस्थितो हि सहा even if a devotee sometimes seems to engage in abominable activities he should be considered a sadhu a saintly person because his actual identity is that of one engaged in the loving service of the lord in other words he is not to be considered an ordinary human being even though a pure devotee may not be born in a brahmana or goswami family if he is engaged in the service of the lord he should not be neglected in actuality there cannot be family of goswami is based on material considerations caste and heredity the goswami title is actually the monopoly of the pure devotee thus we speak of the six goswamis headed by rupa goswami and sanatan goswami rupa goswami and sanatan goswami had practically become mamdans and had therefore changed their names to dabira khas and sakar malika uh but uh, shri chaitanya mahaprabhu himself made them goswamis therefore the goswami title is not hereditary the word goswami refers to one who can control his senses who is master of the senses a devotee is not controlled by the senses but is the controller of the senses consequently he should be called swami or goswami even though he may not be born in a goswami family according to this formula the goswamis who are descendants of shri nityananda prabhu and shri advaita prabhu are certainly devotees but devotees coming from other families should not be discriminated against indeed whether the devotees come from a family of previous acharyas or from an ordinary family they should be treated equally one should not think oh here is an american goswami and discriminate against him nor should one think here is anityananda vamsha goswami there is an undercurrent of protest against our awarding the title goswami to the american vaishnavas of the krishna consciousness movement sometimes people flatly tell the american devotees that their sanyasa or title of goswami is not bona fide however according to the statements of shrila rupa goswami in this verse an american goswami and a goswami in a family of acharyas are not different on the other hand a devotee who has attained the title of goswami but is not born of a brahmana father or of a goswami in the family of nityanand or advaita prabhu should not be artificially puffed up by thinking that he has become a goswami he should always remember that as soon as he becomes materially puffed up he immediately falls down this krishna consciousness movement is a transcendental science and there is no room for jealousy this movement is meant for paramahansas who are completely free from all jealousy parmam nirmit saranam one should not be jealous whether he is born in a family of goswamis or has the title of goswami awarded to him as soon as anyone becomes envious he falls from the platform of paramhamsa if we consider the bodily defects of a vaishnava we should 
understand that we are committing an offense at the lotus feet of the Vaishnava. An offense at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava is very serious. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has described this offense as Hati Mata, the mad elephant offense. A mad elephant can create a disaster, especially when it enters into a nicely trimmed garden. One should therefore be very careful not to commit any offense against a Vaishnava. Every devotee should be ready to take instructions from a superior Vaishnava and a superior Vaishnava must be ready to help an inferior Vaishnava. In all respects, one is superior or inferior according to his spiritual development in Krishna consciousness. One is forbidden or observed the activities of a pure Vaishnava from a material point of view. For the neophyte especially, considering a pure devotee from a material point of view is very injurious. One should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally, but should try to see the internal features and understand how he is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In this way, one can avoid seeing the pure devotee from a material point of view, and thus one can gradually become a purified devotee himself. Those who think that Krishna consciousness is limited to a certain section of people, a certain section of devotees or a certain tract of land are generally prone to see the external features of the devotee. Such new fights, unable to appreciate the exalted service of the advanced devotees, try to bring the Mahabhagavata to their platform. We experience such difficulty in propagating this Krishna consciousness all over the world. Unfortunately, we are surrounded by new fight God brothers who do not appreciate the extraordinary activities of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. They, they simply try to bring us to their platform and they try to criticize us in every respect. We very much regret their naive activities and poor fund of knowledge. An empowered person who is actually engaged in the confidential service of the Lord should not be treated as an ordinary human being. For it is stated that unless one is empowered by Krishna, one cannot spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. When one thus criticizes a pure devotee, he commits an offense. Vaishnava Apradha, that is very obstructive and dangerous for those who desire to advance in Krishna consciousness. A person cannot uh, derive any spiritual benefit when he offends the lotus feet of a Vaishnava. Everyone should therefore be very careful not to be jealous of an empowered Vaishnava or a Shuddha Vaishnava. It is also an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. One can distinguish between a new fight Vaishnava and an advanced Vaishnava by their activities. The advanced Vaishnava is always situated as the spiritual master and the new fight is always considered his disciple. The spiritual master must not be subjected to the advice of a disciple, nor should the spiritual master be obliged to take instructions from those who are not his disciples. This is the sum and substance of Srila Rupa Goswami's advice in the sixth verse. Text 7 Syat Krishna Nama Charitadi Sitapya Avidya Pitopatata Rasanasya Na Rochika No Kintva Adharad Anudinam Khalu Saiva Jushta Swadavi Kramad Bhavati Tad Gada Maula Hantri Translation The holy name, character, pastimes and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya ignorance cannot 
taste anything sweet. It is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and uh, his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Purport. The holy name of Lord Krishna, his quality, pastimes and so forth are all the nature of absolute truth, beauty and bliss. Naturally, they are very sweet, like sugar candy, which appeals to everyone. In a sense, um, however, is compared to the disease called jaundice, which is called by bilious secretions. Attacked by jaundice, the tongue of a diseased person cannot palatably relish sugar candy. Rather, a person with jaundice considers something sweet to taste very bitter. Avidya ignorance similarly perverts the ability to relish the transcendentally palatable name, quality, form and pastimes of Krishna. Despite this, this disease, if one with great care and attention takes to Krishna consciousness, chanting the holy name and hearing Krishna's transcendental pastimes, his ignorance will be destroyed and his tongue enabled to taste the sweetness of the transcendental nature of Krishna and his paraphernalia. Such a recovery of spiritual health is possible only by the regular Cultivation of Krishna Consciousness When a man in the material world takes more interest in the materialistic way of life than in Krishna Consciousness, he is considered to be in a diseased condition. The normal condition is to remain an eternal servant of the Lord. Jivera Swarupa Hai Krishnera Nityadas This healthy Condition is lost when the living entity forgets Krishna due to being attracted by the external features of Krishna's Maya energy. This world of Maya is called Durashraya, which means false or bad shelter. One who puts his faith in Durashraya becomes a candidate for hoping against hope. In the material world, everyone is trying to become happy and although their material attempts are baffled in every way due to their nonsense, they cannot to understand their mistakes. People try to rectify one mistake by making another mistake. This is the way of the struggle for existence in the material world. If one in this condition is advised to take to Krishna consciousness and be happy, he does not accept such instructions. This Krishna consciousness movement is being spread all over the world just to remedy this gross ignorance. People in general are misled by blind leaders, the leaders of human society, the politicians, philosophers and scientists are blind because they are not Krishna conscious. According to Bhagavad Gita, because they are bereft of all factual knowledge due to their atheistic way of life, they are actually sinful rascals and are the lowest among men. Namam Dushkriti no Muraha Prapadyante Naradhamaha Mayaya Vaheryata Jnana Asuram Bhavam Ashrita Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me. Bhagavad Gita 7.15 Such people never surrender to Krishna and they oppose the endeavor of those who wish to take Krishna's shelter. When such atheists become leaders of society, the entire atmosphere is surcharged with nascence. Uh, in such a condition, people do not become very enthusiastic to receive this Krishna consciousness movement. Just as a diseased person suffering from jaundice does not relish the taste of sugar candy. However, one must know that for jaundice, sugar candy is the only specific medicine. Similarly, in present confused 
state of humanity, Krishna consciousness, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the only remedy for setting the world all right. Although Krishna consciousness may not be very palatable for a diseased person, Srila Rupa Goswami nonetheless advises that if one wants to be cured of the material disease, he must take to it with great care and attention. One begins his treatment by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra because by chanting this holy name of the Lord, a person in the material condition will be relieved from all misconceptions. Cheto Darpana Marjanam Avidya, a misconception about one's spiritual identity, provides the foundation of uh, uh, for Ahankara or false ego within the heart. The real disease is in the heart. If the mind is cleansed, however, if consciousness is cleansed, a person cannot be harmed by the material disease. To cleanse the mind, the heart, from all misconceptions, one should take to this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This is both easy and beneficial. By chanting the holy name of the Lord, one is immediately freed from the blazing fire of the material existence. There are three stages in chanting the holy name of the Lord. The offensive stage, the stage of lessening offenses and pure stage. When a new fight takes on to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he generally commits many offenses. There are 10 basic offenses and if the devotee avoids these, he can glimpse the next stage, which is situated between offensive chanting and pure chanting. When one attains the pure stage, he is immediately liberated. This is called the Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapana. Uh, as soon as one is liberated from the blazing fire of the material existence, he can relish the taste of transcendental life. The conclusion is that in order to get freed from the material disease, one must take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. The Krishna consciousness movement is especially meant for creating an atmosphere in which people can take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. One must begin with faith and when this faith is increased by chanting, a person can become a member of the society. We are sending Sankirtana parties all over the world and they are experiencing that even in the remotest part of the world, where there is no knowledge of Krishna, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra attracts thousands of men to our camp. In some areas, people begin to imitate um, the devotees uh, by shaving their heads and chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Only a few days after hearing the mantra, this may be imitative, but imitation of a good thing is desired. Some imitators gradually become interested in being initiated by the spiritual master and offer themselves for initiation. If one is sincere, he is initiated and this stage is called Bhajana Kriya. One then actually engages in the service of the Lord by regularly chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. 16 rounds daily and refrains from illicit sex, intoxicants, meat eating and gambling. By Bhajana Kriya, one attains freedom from the contamination of materialistic life. He no longer goes to a restaurant or hotel to taste so-called palatable dishes made with meat and onions. Nor does he care to smoke or drink tea or coffee. He not only refrains from illicit sex, but avoids sex life entirely. Nor is he interested in wasting his time in, a, in the speculating or gambling. In this way, it is to be understood that one is becoming cleansed of unwanted things, anartha nevrati. The word anartha refers to unwanted things. Anarthas are vanquished when one becomes attached to the Krishna consciousness movement. When a person is relieved from unwanted things, 
he becomes fixed in executing his Krishna activities. Indeed, he becomes attached to such activities and experiences ecstasy in executing devotional service. This is called Pava, the preliminary awakening of dormant love of Godhead. Thus, the conditioned soul becomes free from material existence and loses interest in the bodily conception of life, including material opulence, material knowledge and material attraction of all variety. At such a time, one can understand who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is and what his Maya is. Although Maya may be present, it cannot disturb a devotee once he attains the Bhava stage. This is because the devotee can see the real position of Maya. Maya means forgetfulness of Krishna and forgetfulness of Krishna and the Krishna consciousness stand side by side like light and shadow. If one remains in shadow, he cannot enjoy the facilities offered by light. And if one remains in light, he cannot be disturbed by the darkness of shadow. By taking to Krishna consciousness, one gradually becomes liberated and remains in light. Indeed, he does not even touch the darkness. As confirmed in Chaitanya Charitra Amrit Madhya Leela 23.31 Krishna Surya Sama Maya hai andhkar, jaha Krishna taha nahi mayar adhikar. Krishna is compared to sunshine and Maya is compared to darkness. Wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. As soon as one takes to Krishna consciousness, the darkness of illusion, the influence of external energy will immediately vanish. Text 8 Tan Nama Rupa Charitadi Sukrati Nanu Smritoho Kramena Rasanam Nasi Nyoje Tishthan Raje Tad Anuragi Jananugami Kalam Nayada Akilam Iti Updesha Saram Translation the essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, is in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's strong and mind. In this way, one should reside in Raja, Golok Vrindavan Dhamma and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. Purport. Since the mind may be one's enemy or one's friend, one has to train the mind to become his friend. The Krishna consciousness movement is especially meant for training the mind to be always engaged in Krishna's business. The mind contains hundreds and thousands of impressions, not only for this life, but also of many, many lives of the past. These impressions sometimes come in contact with one another and produce contradictory pictures. In this way, the mind's function can become dangerous for a conditioned soul. Students of psychology are aware of the mind's various psychological changes. In Bhagavad Gita 8.6, it is said, Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhavam Tayajyate Ante Kalevram Tam Tam Evayati Konte Sada Tad Bhavva Bhavyate Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, the, that state he will attain without fail. At the time of death, the mind and intelligence of a living entity create the subtle form of a certain type of body for the next life. If the mind suddenly thinks of something not very congenial, one has to take a corresponding birth in the next life. On the other hand, if one thinks of Krishna in the next in the time of death, he can be transferred to the spiritual world. 
Goloka Vrindavan. This process of transmigration is very subtle. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami advises devotees to train their minds in order that they will be unable to remember anything other than Krishna. Similarly, the tongue should be trained to speak only of Krishna and to taste only Krishna Prasada. Srila Rupa Goswami further advises Tishtan Raje. One should live in Vrindavan or any part of Rajabhumi. Rajabhumi or the land of the Vrindavan is supposed to be 84 kosas in area. One kosa equals 2 square miles. When one makes Vrindavan his residence, one should take shelter of an advanced devotee there. In this way, one should always think of Krishna and his pastimes. This is further elucidated by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhaktaras Amrit Sindhu 1.2.294. Krishnam is Marnam Janam Chasya Prishnam Nij Samhitam Tat Tat Katharat Chasau Kuryad Vasam Raje Sada. A devotee should always reside in the transcendental realm of Praja and always engage in Krishnam is Marnam Janam Chasya Prishtam, the remembrance of Shri Krishna and his beloved associates. By following in the footsteps of such associates and by entering under their eternal guidance, one can acquire the intense desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Again, Srila Rupa Goswami states in Bhaktiras Amrit Sindhu 1.2.295, Seva sadhak rupen sid rupen chatrahi tad bhav lipsuna karya raj loka nu saratva. In the transcendental realm of Raja, Raja Dhamma, one should serve the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna with a feeling similar to that of his associates, and one should place himself under the direct guidance of a particular associate of Krishna and should follow in his footsteps. This method is applicable both in the stage of sadhana, spiritual practices executed while in the stage of bondage and in the stage of sadhya, God realization. When one is a siddha purusha or a spiritually perfect soul, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura has commented as follows upon this verse, One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remembering Krishna and his name, form, quality, pastimes and so forth. In this way, after developing a taste for for such things, one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time constantly remembering Krishna's name, fame, pastimes and qualities under the direction and protection of an expert devotee. This is the sum and substance of all instruction regarding the cultivation of devotional service. In the new fight stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Katha. This is called uh, Shravana Dasa, the stage of hearing. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, qualities and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called uh, Varana Dasa. When one attains this stage, he becomes attached to the hearing of Krishna Katha. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of uh, Smaran Avastha, the stage of remembering, recollection, absorption, meditation, constant remembrance and trance are the five items of progressive Krishna Smarna. At first, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, but later remembrance proceeds in uninterrupted. 
when remembrance is uninterrupted it becomes concentrated and is called meditation when meditation expands and becomes constant it is called uh, anusmriti by uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti one enters the stage of samadhi or spiritual trance after smarna dasa or samadhi has fully developed the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position at that time he can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with krishna this is called uh, sampati dasa the perfection of life chaitanya charitra amrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in regulative devotional service of the lord according to the directions of the scriptures in this way a neophyte can gradually develop attachment to krishna's name fame form qualities and so forth when one has developed such attachment he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of krishna even without following the regulative principles this stage is called raga bhakti or devotional service in spontaneous love at that stage the devotee can follow the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of krishna in vrindavan this is called raganuga bhakti raganuga bhakti or spontaneous devotional service can be executed in the shantarasa when one aspires to be like krishna's cow or the stick or flute in the hand of krishna or the flowers around krishna's neck in the dasya rasa one follows in the footsteps of servants like chitraka patraka or raktaka uh in the friendly sakya rasa uh, one can become a friend like baldeva shri dama or sudama in the vatsalya rasa characterized by the paternal affection one can become like nand maharaj and yashoda and in the madhurya rasa characterized by conjugal love one can become like shrimati radharani or her lady friends such as lalita and her serving maids manjris like rupa and rati this is the essence of all instructions in the matter of devotional service text 9 vaikuntha cha janito vara madhu puri tatrapi rasot swad वृंदा अरण्यम उदारा पानी रामनाथ तात्रापी गोवर्धन राधा कुंडम इहापी गोकुल पते प्रेम अमृता पलवते कुरियाद से विराजत किरीटे सेवा विवेकी न कहा translation the holy place known as mathura is spiritually superior to vaikuntha the transcendental world because the lord appeared there superior to mathura puri is transcendental forest of vrindavana because of krishna's rasa leela pastimes and superior to the forest of vrindavan is govardhana hill or it was raised by the divine hand of shri krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes and above all the super uh, the super excellent shri radha kunda stands supreme for it is over flooded with the ambrosial nectarian prema of the lord of gokula shri krishna where then in is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this divine radha kunda which is situated at the foot of govardhana hill purport the spiritual world is three fourth of the total creation of the supreme personality of godhead and it is the most exalted region the spiritual world is naturally superior to the material world 
However, Mathura and the adjoining areas, although appearing in the material world, are considered superior to the spiritual world because the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself appeared in Mathura. The interior forests of Vrindavan are considered superior to Mathura because of the presence of the twelve forests, Dwada Savana, such as Talvana, Madhuvana and Bahulavana, which are famous for the various pastimes of the Lord. Thus, the interior Vrindavan forest is considered superior to Mathura, but superior to those forests is the divine Govardhana hill, because Krishna lifted the Govardhana hill like an umbrella, raising it with his whole lotus-like beautiful hand to protect his associates, the denizens of Vraja. From the torrential rain sent by the angry Indra, king of the demigods. It is also at Govardhana Hill that Krishna tends to cows with his cohort friends, and there also he had his rendezvous with his most beloved Sri Radha and engaged in loving pastimes with her. Radha Kunda at the foot of Govardhana is superior to all because it is there that love of Krishna overflows. Advanced devotees prefer to reside at Radha Kunda because this place is the site of many memories of the eternal loving affairs between Krishna and Radha Rani Rati Vilasa. In Chaitanya Charitra Amrit Madhya Leela, it is stated that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first visited the area of Rajabhumi, he could not at first find the location of Radha Kunda. This means that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was actually searching for the exact location of Radha Kunda. Finally, he found the holy spot and there was a small pond there. He took his bath in that small pond and told his devotees that the actual Radha Kunda was situated there. Later, the pond was Excavated by Lord Chaitanya's devotees, headed by first the six Goswamis, such as the Rupa and Raghunatha Das. Presently, there is a large lake known as Radha Kunda there. Srila Rupa Goswami has given much stress to the Radha Kunda because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to find it. Who then would give up Radha Kunda and try to reside elsewhere? No person with transcendental intelligence would do so. The importance of Radha Kunda, however, cannot be realized by other Vaishnava sampradayas, nor can persons uninterested in the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understand the spiritual importance and divine nature of Radha Kunda. This Radha Kunda is mainly worshipped by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Lord Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 10. Karmibhe parito hare priyataya vyaktim yayur jnani sa tebhyo jnan vimukta bhakti parmaha premek nishthaha sa tataha tebhya sa taha pashu pala pankaja vishasta tebhyo api saradika preshtha tadva Diyama, Tadiya Sarsi Tama Nashrita Rahakriti. Translation In the Shastras, it is said that of all types of fruitive workers, he who is advanced in knowledge of higher values of life is favored by the Supreme Lord Hari. Out of many such people who are advanced in knowledge, Gyanis, one who is practically liberated by virtue of his knowledge, may take to devotional service. He is superior to the others. However, one who has actually attained prema, pure love for Krishna, is superior to him. The gopis are exalted above all the advanced devotees because they are 
always totally dependent upon Shri Krishna, the transcendental cohort boy. Among the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the most dear to Krishna. Her kunda lake is as profoundly dear to Lord Krishna as this most beloved of the gopis, who then will not reside at Radha kunda. And in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings. Aprakrit Bhav Render loving service to the divine couple Shri Shri Radha Govinda who perform their Ashtakalya Leela, their eternal eightfold daily pastimes. Indeed, those who execute devotional service on the banks of Radha Kunda are the most fortunate people in the universe. Purport. At the present moment, Almost everyone is engaged in some kind of fruitive activity. Those who are desirous of gaining material profits by working are called karmis or fruitive workers. All living entities within this material world have come under the spell of Maya. This is described in Vishnu Purana 6.7.61. Vishnu Shakti Paro Prokta Kshetra Gyakya Tatha Para Avidya Karma Sangyanyaye Tatyaye Shaktir Ishyate. Sages have divided the energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead into three categories, namely the spiritual energy, the marginal energy, and the material energy. The material energy is considered to be the third class energy, Tritya Sakshaktihi. Those living beings with the jurisdiction of the material energy sometimes engage themselves like dogs and hogs uh, in working very hard simply for sense gratification. However, in this life or after executing pious activities, in the next life, some karmis become strongly attracted to performing various kinds of sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas. Thus, on the strength of their pious merit, they are elevated to heavenly planets. Actually, those who perform sacrifices strictly according to the Vedic injunctions are elevated to the moon and planets above the moon, as mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita 9.21. Hine punye mrityu lokam vishanti. After exhausting the results of their so called pious activities, they again return to the earth, which is called mrityu loka, the place of death. Although such persons may be elevated to the heavenly planets by their pious activities, and although they may enjoy life there for many thousands of years, they nonetheless uh, must return to this planet when the results of their pious activities are exhausted. This is the position of all karmis, including those who act piously and those who act impiously. On this planet, we find many businessmen, politicians and others who are simply interested in material happiness. They attempt to earn money by all means, not considering whether such means uh, are pious or impious. Such people are called karmis or gro gross materialists. Among the karmis are some vikramis, people who act uh, uh, without the guidance of Vedic knowledge. Those who act on the basis of Vedic knowledge perform sacrifices for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu and to receive benedictions from him. In this way, they are elevated to higher planetary systems. Such karmis are superior to the vikarmis for they are faithful to the direction of the Vedas and certainly dear to Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita 4.11, Krishna says, Ye yatha mama prapadyante tasthevo bhajyam ayam. In whatever way one surrenders unto me, I reward him accordingly. Krishna is so kind that he fulfilled the desires of the karmis and jnanis, not to speak of the bhaktas. 
uh, although the Karmis are sometimes elevated to higher planetary systems, as long as they remain attached uh, to fruitive activities, they must accept uh, new material bodies after that. If one acts uh, piously, he can attain a new body among the demigods in the higher planetary systems, or he may attain some other position in which he can enjoy a higher standard of material happiness. On the other hand, those who are engaged in the impious activities are degraded and take birth and, uh, as animals, trees and plants. Thus, those fruitive actors who do not uh, care for the Vedic directions, we call means, are not appreciated by learned, saintly persons, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.4. Noonam Pramataha Kurute Vikram Yadi Indriya Pratiye Apronoti Na Sadhu Manye Yat Atmano Yam San Api Kleshad As Dehe Materialists who work hard like dogs and hogs simply for sense gratification are actually mad. They simply perform all kinds of Abominable activities simply for sense gratification. Materialistic activities are not at all worthy of an intelligent man. For as a result of such activities, one gets a material body, which is full of misery. The purpose of human life is to get out of the threefold miserable conditions which are concomitant with material existence. Unfortunately, fruitive workers are mad to earn money and acquire temporary material comforts by all means. Therefore, they risk being degraded to lower species of life. Materialists foolishly make many plans to become happy in this material world. They do not stop to consider that they will live only for a certain number of years, out of which they must spend the major portion acquiring money for sense gratification. Ultimately, such activities end in death. Materialists do not consider that after giving up body, they may become embodied as lower animals, plants or trees. Thus, all their activities simply defeat the purpose of life. Not only are they born ignorant, but they act on the platform of ignorance, thinking that they are getting material benefits in the shape of skyscraper buildings, big cars, honorable positions, and so on. The materialists do not know that in the next life they will be degraded and that all their activities simply serve as Parabhava, their defeat. This is the verdict of Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.5. Parabhavas Tavad Abodha Jataha. One should therefore be eager to understand the signs of the soul, Atma Tattva. Unless one comes to the platform of Atma Tattva, uh, by which one understands that the soul and not the body is oneself, one remains on the platform of ignorance. Out of thousands and even millions of ignorant people who are wasting their time simply gratifying their senses, one may come to the platform of knowledge and understand higher values of life. Such a person is called a jnani. The jnani knows that fruitive activities will bind him to material existence and cause him to transmigrate from one kind of body to another, as indicated in Srimad Bhagavatam by the term Sharira Bandha, bound to the bodily existence, as long as one maintains any conception of sense enjoyment, his mind will be absorbed in karma, fruitive activities, and this will oblige him to transmigrate from one body to another. Thus, a jnani is considered superior to a karmi because he at least refrains from the blind activities of sense enjoyment. This is the verdict of Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, although a jnani may be liberated from the ignorance of karmis, unless he comes to the platform of devotional service, he is 
still considered to be in ignorance avidya although one may be accepted by as a gyani or one advanced in knowledge his knowledge is considered impure because he has no information of devotional service and thus neglects the direct worship of the lotus feet of the supreme personality of godhead when a gyani takes to devotional service he rapidly becomes superior to an ordinary gyani such an advanced person is described as gyana vimukha bhakti parama how a gyani takes to devotional service is mentioned in bhagavad gita 7.19 where krishna says bahu naam janma namante gyana vanamam प्रपद्यते वासुदेव सर्वामिति सा महात्मा सुदुर्लभा आफ्टर मेनी बर्थ्स एंड डेथ्स ही हु इज एक्चुअली इन नॉलेज सरेंडर्स ऑन टू मी नोइंग मी टू बी द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस एंड ऑल दैट इज सच ए ग्रेट सोल इज वेरी रेयर actually a person is wise when he surrenders unto the lotus feet of krishna but such a mahatma great soul is very rare after taking to devotional service under the regulative principles a person may come to the platform of spontaneous love of godhead following in the footsteps of great devotees like narada and sanaka and sanatana the supreme personality of godhead then recognizes him to be superior the devotees who have developed love of godhead are certainly in an exalted position of all these devotees the gopis are recognized as superior because they do not know anything other than satisfying krishna nor do the gopis expect any return from krishna indeed sometimes krishna puts them into extreme suffering by separating himself from them nonetheless they cannot forget krishna when krishna left vrindavan for mathura the gopis became much dejected and spent the rest of their lives simply crying in separation from krishna this means that in one sense they are never actually separated from krishna there is no difference between thinking of krishna and associating with him rather vipra lamba seva thinking of krishna in separation as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu did is far better then serving krishna directly thus for all the devotees who have uh, developed unalloyed devotional love for krishna the gopis are most exalted and out of all these exalted gopis shrimati radharani is the highest no one can excel the devotional service of shrimati radharani indeed even krishna cannot understand the attitude of shrimati radharani therefore he took her position and appeared as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu just to understand her transcendental feelings in this way shri la rupa goswami gradually concludes that shrimati radharani is the most exalted devotee of krishna and her kunda lake shri radha kunda is the most exalted place this is verified in a quotation from laghu bhagavata amrita uttara khanda 45 as quoted in chaitanya charitra amrita यथा राधा प्रिया विष्णुस्तस्या कुंडम प्रियम तथा सर्व गोपीषु सैवे का विष्णुर अत्यंत वल्लभा just as shrimati radharani is dear to the supreme lord krishna vishnu so her bathing place radha kunda is equally dear to krishna among all the gopis she alone stands supreme as the lord's most beloved therefore everyone interested in krishna consciousness should ultimately take shelter of radha kunda and execute devotional service there throughout one's life this is the conclusion of rupa goswami in the 10th verse of upadesha amrita text 11 krishna syoche pranay vasati hi प्रियसेभ्यो अपिराधा कुंडम चास्या मुनिभीर अभितास तद्रोक एवा व्याधै यत प्रेष्ठीर अपि अलम आशुलाभम किम पुनर्भक्ति भजम 
तत् प्रेमेद सकृदी सरहस्नातोर अविष्कृति translation of the many objects of favored delight and of all the lovable damsels of braja bhumi shrimati radha rani is certainly the most treasured object of krishna's love and in every respect her divine kunda is described by the great sages as similarly dear to him undoubtedly radha kunda is very rarely attained even by the great devotees therefore it is even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain if one simply bathes once within those holy waters one's pure love of krishna is fully aroused our poet why is radha kunda so exalted the lake is so exalted because it belongs to shrimati radha rani who is the most beloved object of shri krishna among all the gopis she is the most beloved similarly her lake shri radha kunda is also described by great sages as the lake that is as dear to krishna as radha herself indeed krishna's love for radha kunda and shrimati radha rani is the same in all respects Radha Kunda is very rarely attained even by great personalities fully engaged in devotional service not to speak of ordinary devotees who are only engaged in the practice of vaidhi bhakti it is stated that a devotee will at once develop pure love of krishna in the wake of the gopis if he once takes a bath in radha kunda shrila rupa goswami recommends sir, that even if one cannot live permanently on the banks of radha kunda he should at least take a bath in the lake as many times as possible this is the most important item in the execution of devotional service shrila bhakti vinod thakur writes in this connection that shri Radha Kunda is the most select place for those interested in advancing their devotional service in the wake of the lady friends sakhis and confidential serving maids manjaris of shrimati radha rani living entities who are eager to return home to the transcendental kingdom of god goloka vrindavan by means of attaining their spiritual bodies siddha deha should live in radha kunda take shelter of the confidential serving maids of shri radha and under their direction engage constantly in her service this is the most exalted method for those engaged in devotional service under the protection of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in this connection shri bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur writes that even great sages and great devotees like narada and sanaka do not get an opportunity to come to radha kunda to take their baths but then to speak of ordinary devotees if by great fortune one gets an opportunity to come to radha kunda and bathe even once he can develop his transcendental love for krishna exactly as the gopis did it is also recommended that one should live on the banks of radha kunda and should be absorbed in the loving service of the lord one should be there regularly and give up all material conceptions taking shelter of shri radha and her assistant gopis if one is thus constantly engaged during his lifetime after giving up the body he will return back to god had to serve shri radha in the same way as he contemplated during his life on the banks of radha kunda the conclusion is that to live on the banks of radha kunda and to bathe there daily constitute the highest perfection of devotional service it is a difficult position to attain even for great sages and devotees like narada thus there is no limit to the glory of shri radha kunda by serving radha kunda one can get an opportunity to become an assistant of shrimati radha rani under the eternal guidance of the gopis jai shri krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram hare hare shri la prabhu की जय हरे कृष्णा धनवत प्रणाम